And we just pray for a special blessing upon all of us, Lord. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Andy. Praise God. Praise God. Look at your neighbor. Don't tap them if they look the other way. <laughs> and say, God morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. See, I, see, no, I threw that. Don't touch them if they look the other way. Because some people are like, I hate when you do that. <laughs> see, we got to get some interaction in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Because this is a celebration. Yeah. Come on. He conquered the grave. Who's grateful for that? I'm talking about sin and death. Come on, you can act like you walked on water when you got out the womb. You can act like you had it all together your whole life. But I'm grateful for the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Can we give God glory for the whosoever? Come on, I don't know about you, but I was a whosoever. So that means he died for me. He died for you. He showed no partiality on that cross. He died for the sins of the world. Adam and Eve didn't trick God in the garden. He's the author and finisher of the faith. He knows the beginning from the end. He wrote it. Amen. They did not trick God in the garden. So that's why in Revelations it says the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. So that means before there's a problem, God already got the solution. Can you praise him for the solution that he already got? I mean, you might be going through something right now, but God already has the solution. See, we, we, we had the opportunity to celebrate Good Friday. But how many know when it was being written, they didn't know it was going to be so good? See, we have the luxury of having a Bible because we know that he rises again. But when you put yourself in the script and put yourself in that Bible, walking with Jesus, walking with their hope, with their expectation that they had on him, that he was going to restore the kingdom back to his former glory. And then watch it, look, dropping everything that they own, everything that they knew to follow this man with a belief and an expectation. And then he got crucified. Oh, we can praise him because we know the whole story. Amen. Because we praise them on Good Friday. Shout out to the God is love tour. Come on, y'all stand up. We're going to stretch our hands forward to them. They come all the way from Atlanta to pour into our city. And, and it wasn't just them two. They came with a whole team. Anybody else? Come on, come on, brother. Stay. All right, praise God. Praise God. I think he's from New York. Okay. Stay up, stay up. We're going we're gonna to stretch our hands forward because y'all not finished. I think y'all going to Detroit next. And then y'all going to Washington, D.C.? And I'm coming too. Praise God. They talking about they want me on Washington, D.C. at the steps of the Lincoln Monument on the International Day of Prayer to be the voice in New Orleans. Man. Did I tell y'all the tomb was empty? Come on, only God can do that. Only God can tell them to go city to city, state to state, without even knowing where they were going, with a mandate on their life, being obedient. I'm talking about they didn't ask us for nothing. They funded their own way, and they actually sowed into our land. Come on, somebody. So let's stretch our hands, because I believe in the power of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the vision that you've given your people, Father God, our people, our family in Christ. For the Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish also. But I thank you that you're giving them vision, Father. I thank you that they had, they had a strategy, Lord, because your Bible says that we must endure as soldiers for Christ. Soldiers take orders. Soldiers have strategy. So we thank you for the strategy that you've given them, Father God. And we declare and decree that everywhere they tread their feet is holy ground. Father, we thank you for the shift that occurred in New Orleans on Good Friday. And we thank you that it's going to continue, Lord Jesus, because when you begin something you're faithful to complete what you started so we pray a hedge of protection be upon them traveling mercy and grace as they go to and fro lead and direct their steps along with their stops i speak the favor of god over their life that he will give them favor with man in the almighty name of jesus christ we pray and let the church scream amen, amen. glory to god we got work to do Lord, the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. So we pray to the Lord of the harvest to send the laborers. Tap your neighbor and say that labor is you. 
Oh, yeah, it's not just Sunday. It's not just Resurrection Sunday. We got work to do. So go into Friday, man. Friday. Let, 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 let's jump in the word. Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Yeah. Having said this, he breathed his last. Picture seeing that. Because by the time he got to the cross, and I give you, when he was doing miracles, when his ministry was popping, West Bank translation, when his ministry was, was it was up, right? People, he, he's multiplying the fish. Who's not going to follow somebody that can multiply fish? Come on, come on, and the bread. Oh, but when it was time for him to give him a commission and say, lest you eat my flesh and drink my blood. He lost thousands in one while. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and then he looks at his disciples. He said, y'all going to leave me too? Yes, sir. Right. Come on. And they look back. They said, where are we going to go? Right. You got the words of eternal life in your mouth. And you know that tells me that if they had somewhere else to go, they probably would have went. But they understood there was nowhere else to go. I pray on this day you, you, you get remembered that there's nowhere else to go. The world doesn't have nothing for you. The club doesn't have nothing for you. The bar doesn't have nothing for you. Can I tell you, there's no other place to go. I never had a peace like this in my entire life, and I chased everything the world had to offer, and I always came up empty. Oh, but when I tasted the goodness of God. Hello, somebody. <laughs> so. By the time he got to the cross, it was only John the Beloved and the three Marys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody else scattered. Yes, sir. That's now, either they were scared or, or, or either, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, or either they knew that they was going to catch them and kill them too and they had work to be done. They had to tell everybody about, the, about Jesus Christ, about the mandate that he put on, his, on their life. Amen. But when I read it, I'm like, man, how lonely was that? Oh, people will rock with you when, it's, when the plane's going up. Oh, but when the layover's too long, they say, I'm going to Starbucks. I don't go to Starbucks. <laughs> I go to PJs. <laughs> P I, and look, I'm not getting endorsements. I'm just being real and raw, you dig? <laughs> so I was reading that. I'm like, man, just, just the women... And John the Beloved, man, can we thank God for the bold women of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can, 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 we, can we do that? Can we give honor to the bold women of God? Because those women went to the cross not caring what it took because they just wanted to stay close to Jesus. Amen. Oh, we could learn a lot from them. So, they, so, so the others, they, 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 they were scattered. They was looking from afar off. And then I, I just want to go into the word a little bit more because Friday he was crucified. Saturday it was silent. Oh, but Sunday. Oh, but Sunday. Oh, oh Friday he got crucified. Cr Friday he got beat up, stripped down, brutally murdered, died the worst death known to man. Saturday was quiet. Oh, but Sunday came back around. Can we thank God that Sunday came back around? You, you know what that tells me? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're at a Friday right now where it feels like your hope is being crucified. It doesn't matter if you're at a Saturday where everything seems silent and you're like, God, I'm just not hearing you no more. None of that matters because Sunday is going to roll back around. Amen. Sunday is coming. Weeping may endure for a night. Oh, but joy cometh in the morning. Come on. An entire nation was weeping, but joy came in the morning. I, I, I look at the scriptures, so I look at the time, right? Because so, so, how many people be on TikTok? Y'all ain't got to raise y'all hand. I know some of y'all. <laughs> but you know, they got those videos pop up and they like, well, how is the third day he rose when he got a good Friday was a Friday and then Friday to Saturday, that's two days. See, the Bible is a contradiction. The devil is a liar. Amen. I don't know why I do it in that voice. Don't judge me for that voice. 
That's just how I just picture them behind the keyboard typing those memes, right? But then I'm like, study to show yourself approved. Because the Bible don't contradict itself. Now, when I first heard that, I'm like, hold up. Now, I know you real because you parted the Red Sea of the Louisiana judicial system for me. I know you real because my son is not dead and he, he was born with, a, with life expectancy three months. I know you real, so help me understand this. He said, you're trying to read the calendar like this happened in America. Oh, go back to the Hebrew calendar. Go back to the original script. See how they count their days. Because if I don't know something, I know about counting days. I spent years. Some of y'all caught it. Pops, I spent years counting days. You know too. Okay. 52 months, one week and a wake up and I'm going home. I know how to count days. So the math wasn't mathing, right? So God said, get, 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 get into the exegete, get, get into the hermeneutical value of the text. Get into, as it was written, get into my calendar. So I start looking at the Hebrew calendar, right? So I'm looking at the Hebrew calendar, and it's all inclusive. See, the next day starts at, when as soon as it gets nighttime, the next day starts. So Friday was one day. When it got nighttime, it was Saturday. Then Saturday was another day. When it got nighttime, it was Sunday. It's all inclusive. It begins on the day of so here we go here we go for tiktok friday saturday sunday he rose again praise god hallelujah it all adds up it, it, it all adds up let my god be the truth and every man be a lie man i remember and, and, and look don't get that complicated with it some of y'all like i gotta learn hebrew now look pump your brakes because I remember when I first got out that program and dude called me to get into this Christian cipher and he had a big studio, nice studio. He had all kinds of connections and all of that. So I, I, I had the last verse. So we, we, we went, we knocked the song out. So everybody was in the studio. And then he starts trying to like tell everybody. He was like, do y'all, y'all don't know about the Hebrew. Y'all don't know about the, the Jewish. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know what happened in that time period. What y'all need to do is put the Bible up and start studying the customs of Hebrew. Wow. Uh, it's like, uh, like, a, like a record scratch in my head. Put the Bible up. And everybody's quiet because he was a man that could potentially put them in a better situation. But I know there's no better situation than in right standing with the Father, amen. So when he said, put the Bible up, there was, I, I was accountable to say something because I was there, amen. So I got up and I said, the devil is a liar. Put the Bible up. Man, look, the Bible changed my life, amen. I don't know about Hebrew, Greek, I don't know none of that. But I know the Bible is real and I know Jesus died for my sins and I know this word is working in my life praise God so I said that to say don't make it so complex because when I go there you feel like you have to read something else no God will take you amen as you walk babies eat Similac babies drink milk babies not eating lobsters and steaks with baked potatoes and cheese rolling off the side of the plate see so just be comfortable with your milk but don't stay there amen see that milk you gotta grow in grace in the knowledge of Christ Jesus see that milk gotta turn into some solid food but you gotta start with the milk Amen. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God. Can we give God glory for the milk? Because I needed the milk. I needed the milk. You can't feed a baby pole chops. No, they're going to die. They're going to choke. They're going to regurgitate. No, we got to give them milk in season. But guess what? It doesn't look cute when you're 12 years old on a bottle. You got to grow in grace in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. God is calling us into deeper understanding and revelation of who he is so we can understand the times that we're in. Because if we don't know what time it is, we're lost. And then when, a, when, a, when, when they put all of this propaganda and they throw all of this stuff and they make all of these videos, then it will engulf you with fear. Then you don't know which way to go. One thing, we have not been given the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So we don't fear that these things are transpiring. If anything, it should give us a joy to know Maranatha, our Savior, is coming. Let's dig into it. Matthew 12, 38 to 41. 
The scribes and the Pharisees asked for a sign. Then some of the scribes and the Pharisees answering, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. Praise God. Praise God. They're looking for a sign. They're looking for a sign, and he's trying to let them know, I'm right in front of you. An evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign because they don't want to just have faith and believe. Oh, it got to make sense. How, how can you wrap a God that created the universe, the stars, took man from the dirt, breathing him the breath of life, and a man popped up? How can you think you can understand him? Amen. Amen. Amen? He cannot be contained in your medulla obligata, you hear me? He's God, praise God. And he said, lean not on your own understanding because my ways are far more greater than your ways. So, 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 so I'm reading it, a wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign. Is it because they want to know if they got enough time? Is it because they want to know, I got time to get right? It, it, come on, I, I, don't know, I don't know about y'all, but I, I know I'm struggling with addictions and vices and, and thinking like, I'm just going to do one more day. Or I'm just going to go out one more time. Or I'm just going to do this one more time. So many people said that one more time ended up there last time. Come on, I, I, you might not have one more time. We don't need a sign. The sign is right there. When we was preaching on bourbon last week, one of the dudes, I was ministering to him, and he was receiving, and he said, man, 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 what's your sign? My sign is, he said, one of those signs, Sagittarius or something, he said, he said, what's your sign? Because you speak, and I said, my sign? Oh, my sign is the cross. I don't go by no horoscope, amen? He said, oh, I feel that, I feel that, I hope you do, amen? I don't need a sign. I know he rose. I know he's real. And once you set your heart after the things of the Lord, which you have, you here today on Resurrection Sunday. Praise God. And it doesn't matter why I'm not going to beat nobody in the head with a Bible. Oh, you need to come every week and all of that. No, I'm glad you're here. Because I think about how many times Ashley drugged me to church. Or oh, oh, Awela drugged me to church. Amen. But it was my time in my season on the right day. I went, a gospel I heard over and over, but on that Kairos moment, everything just began to click. And I was like, man, he's real. And I was drawn to that altar and I was weeping. And that was 12 years ago and I ain't looked back since. Yeah. Amen. I don't need a sign. So let's keep reading. There's some of the scribes and Pharisees answered saying, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to, man, Jesus was about it. Huh? Uh, they got to stop painting him like this little baby Jesus. He ain't no baby Jesus. He rose from the grave. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. He conquered sin and death. Come on. He ain't no baby no more. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered and said, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That's him. When he died and rose from the grave. Friday he died. Saturday it was quiet. But Sunday he rose again. That's the sign. Praise God. So, so keep reading it. How many know, how many heard about this solar eclipse that's about to hit? The American solar eclipse. Yeah. It's all over everywhere, right? Yeah. And, and, what, and it's going to pass over what cities? Yeah. Okay, now I know who really be on their computer. <laughs> okay, so, so let's go back up. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, And even an adult generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet of... Jonah, 
Okay, the solar eclipse is passing over seven cities in America with the name, guess what? Okay, y'all, 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 y'all on it, right? So is this the sign he's talking about? Could this be it? And it's seven, seven number of completion? And it's seven, we did seven stops on Good Friday. We did the seven sayings of the cross, amen. On the seventh day, see, God doesn't rest until the work's done. On the seventh day, he rested, amen. So could this be it? Because I'm going to show you right in the word. It, it, it tells us. Y'all ready for it? Luke 24, 13 to 16. Now behold, hold on, I'm going ahead of myself. Matthew 24, this is it. Y'all ready for it? Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth, say it with me. Say, say it with me. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Okay. Because in these times, in this hour, many false prophets will rise up. Be careful when people try to tell you they figured out when the end of the world is coming. You need to say, I just figured out I need to pray for you. Now, am I saying it's not a sign? I'm not saying that. Because the Lord has no wasted acts. Nothing happens by chance or coincidence. That's not even a word in the Hebrew. It's happening with the purpose. So I'm going into Nineveh. All right, well, what, what, then what's Nineveh? You said the sign of Jonah, and we want to go to Nineveh. And Nineveh, actually, in its original text, what it means, that name Nineveh, it means exterior growth. Okay, so the sign is over. The, the solar eclipse is going to be over the seven cities that are all labeled Nineveh, all named Nineveh, Nineveh, exterior growth. And then he takes me back to America. And on this day, they want to recognize gender or uh, transgender, right? They, they, they said it and stapled it that this is going to be a day to acknowledge the transgenders in America. But this is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Okay, now, now, now let me show you something, though, because as we're in election season, there's going to be a power shift. And anytime there's a power shift, there's going to be confusion and discord, right? So we got to make sure that we pray for discernment so we don't get lost in the confusion and be the ones promoting discord. Amen. Because what we are, we're Christians. Amen. We're, we're not Democrat first. We're not Republican first. Amen. We sons and daughters of the most high king. Praise God. So if you know a conversation is going to bring discord, then guess what? You need to fall back from that conversation because we're not called to win arguments. We're called to win souls. We're called to win souls. Amen. This is not a political platform. This is a platform of the living God. Praise God. Amen. So as they did this, but you got to look, you got to look and you got to understand. You can't just take things at face value because that was actually set in motion in 2009. Oh, but everybody's wilding because they're like, oh, Biden did that now because today is Resurrection Sunday. But how many people know Resurrection Sunday usually don't fall in March? It, it, it came quicker this year, right? It came closer this year, right? Okay, the resurrection, he, he, he rose from the grave. It came quicker this year. And I think God is just trying to show us that the time is coming soon. Amen. Now, everybody wilding out. Now, it says exterior growth because America is trying to be on this thing that they're woke now, but they're falling asleep. That they're growing and we need to understand and we need to love and we do need to love, but we cannot contradict the word of God. Because one thing we got to understand, it's not to shun anybody. See, the thing with the transgender, see, people have them coming into agreement with a lifestyle that's contrary to the word of God and the wages of sin is death. They have more suicides in that community than anything else. And I think about it, see, with my struggle, it, I, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong to sell drugs. I knew it was wrong to shoot guns and I wasn't a law officer like my brother here. I knew those things were wrong. So it was easy for me to get convicted from it when I gave my life to Christ. But you got a community here where people are trying to let them tell them that this is normal. Now they come into agreement with a fallacy, and when you come into agreement with a lie, you live a life with limitations, and the wages of sin is death. It's not to write them off. It's not to put on these, these, these mean memes and be a mean Christian. That's an oxymoron. Yes, sir. 
We got to have the joy of the Lord and we got to love on them even more. Go the extra mile even more. Develop relationships even more because it's the Holy Spirit that convicts you of sin. People don't want, what's that saying? People don't want to hear how much you know until they know how much you can. Man, look, that's biblical. We got to love on each other. We got to love on our neighbors. So he's talking about this Nineveh and exterior growth. So, all right, so, all right, so he's showing Nineveh. He's highlighting Nineveh. And, and we're in a season where they're trying to make sin cool. And they're trying to say what's good is bad and what's bad is good, right? So we need to understand the time and the season that we're in. But the message to Nineveh was what? Repent. Repent. This is solely clear. Everybody's blasting it out everywhere. All God's saying is repent. Because his wish is that none shall perish. Look, look, resurrection came sooner, amen. He's coming sooner. Can I tell you, we've been in the last days since the book of Acts. He said, in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will have visions and old men will dream dreams. How many people got visions in here? How many people dreaming dreams in here? How many things you see, man, I'll be having some dreams. I guess he's saying I'm old now because I used to, I still got vision though, but I have, I've been having a lot of dreams lately, but I'm not going to get into that today. This is what we got to understand. We are in that hour, in that final hour, and the skies could crack any time. So the message to Nineveh was repent. So, but, but, but hold up, but he said of the prophet Jonah. Oh, so let, 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 let's go to the prophet Jonah. So the prophet Jonah was trying to walk away from what he was called to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was called to go to Nineveh, yes, but he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Yes, he went the whole other way. Look, some of y'all have been called by God in here. You got to call it on, and you know you got to call it on your life. But you don't want the responsibility you know that calling is going to come with. Yes, Stop going away from your calling because all you're doing is wasting time. And guess what? It's going to cost you to be disobedient. Yeah. The, the, the Bible says he paid a fare. He paid a cost to be disobedient to the Lord. I, I've been had a calling all my life. It would have saved my family a lot of heartache and grief and pain if I would have responded to that calling that I been knew I had all my life. It cost me to be disobedient to God. It costs. Yeah. Count the cost. Wow. Stop running. Come on. It, he paid to get himself in more trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you're like, oh, I don't do that. <laughs> Man, y'all don't have to raise your hands. But every time you found yourself in a holding tank, I guarantee you it costs you some money. Yeah. Some people trying to reserve their cell. Like, Not me. I got a suit on today. Not me. It costs. He ended up in a storm. Come on. People, innocent bystanders. Can I, can I tell you, your disobedience is going to cause other people trouble and heartache? Yes. People on that boat, innocent. They were stuck in a storm too. They didn't know what was going on. They throwing all kinds of stuff off the boat. When the one they needed to throw out was Jonah. <laughs> I'm not telling no, some people like, I, I know who I need to throw off my boat. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> then I'm going to get a message. Bro, you told my girl to throw me off the boat. <laughs> I ain't say that. <laughs> I'm just saying, watch the people you got on the boat with you. Because the people you got on your boat with you might cause you to fall into a storm that was never meant to come your way. So guess what they did? They threw Jonah off the boat. And he got swallowed up. What he got swallowed up by? Okay, did not say well. No, no, I, I was. See, that's why we got to stick to the word as it's written. See, that was good for uh, Sunday uh, kids ministry and Sunday school. That's cool for that. You know, they they live, but 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 really, let's let's just stick to the word because when they grow up, they're gonna run into somebody like TikTok. 
a whale has internal, uh, uh, so the, uh, the, the body, it would have ate up his body because of the ashes that are in the stomach. There's no way he could have possibly lived inside of a whale for three days. The devil is a liar because God didn't say it was a whale. So guess what he did? God created a specific fish for his purpose to swallow Jonah up to where he can live in the belly for three days because God was trying to show Jonah something. See, God wanted Jonah to repent and although Jonah felt like he was in hell, but he cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard him, amen, and he got spit out that whale and guess where he landed? Where he was running from. I got chewed up, spit up, spit out. And ended up right back where he called me to be. I'm trying to save you some heartache along with your people and your kids. Amen. Yes, amen. It was a specific whale that God created. So, not no, a fish. So, that tells me. <laughs> see? See what I'm saying? <laughs> so, that tells me even the fish have purpose. So, that, so that means that, that God, did I tell y'all the Lord has no wasted acts? So he does everything with a purpose and a divine purpose, amen? And it's on us to find that purpose, praise God. If he's saying, look, I called you out of darkness into my marvelous light, that means he just turned the lights on. So now you can see your purpose. You can see what you were created for. And he's going to show you step by step. But first you got to take the first step and stop moonwalking. Amen? amen. Praise God. Y'all with me? Then Jonah, Jonah 2, 1 to 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I and thou heardest my voice. He cried out. I think today needs to be a day that you just cry out. And he's going to hear you. And he's going to really, he's going to deliver you. Because that's what today is all about. It's about deliverance. He conquered the grave to deliver us. Because of the fall of man. We live in a corrupted world. The devil, the prince in power, the air, having a field day, sin is increasing. But grace is abounding all the more. He loves you so much he woke you up. To give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Then you have resurrection power. Then the same power that rose Jesus from the grave now lives inside of you. Stop with your carnal expectation of what you think God was supposed to do. Or how you think God was supposed to do it. Because you're not God. Being the God of your life is the one that got you in trouble. It wasn't God. He permits with a purpose in his grace allowed you to wake back up because he desires a relationship with you. Yeah. Tap your neighbor, say he's talking to you. Yeah. Neighbor, look back, say, nah, he's talking to you. <laughs> well, some, some of y'all did that one too quick. He's talking to you. Yeah, he's talking to you too. Okay, okay, okay. He's talking to us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Luke 24, 13 to 16. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles. There goes that seven again. Amen. Seven miles from Jerusalem. Hold, hold up. Seven miles from Jerusalem. But they were supposed to stay in Jerusalem. Oh, okay. Let's keep reading. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Jesus drew himself to them. They were walking seven miles away from where they were supposed to be. See, when he gives the commission, go to Jerusalem and tarry until you're endued with power. Okay, that comes later on. He got crucified in Jerusalem. They were supposed to stay put because of the word. They were supposed to stay put because he was going to rise again. Oh, 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 but see, 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 that's what happens when you put your own expectation on God and you expect God to do it like this. 
God, I, I, I want you to do it like this. I got faith. I believe. Then we try to witchcraft the Bible. Oh, like, like, like it's some stones or rocks or something. Like, I said that. You said all things. You said I do it and you're going to do it and have faith. You said if I believe, I receive. I believe. But do you really? Because if you believe, see, 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 I don't care if somebody I know is credible and I know they have a word and I know they love me and they tell me they're going to pick me up. I'm going to stay put because I know they're coming. They might be a little late. Oh, but they're going to be on time because I'm on God's watch. God said, wait at Chick-fil-A. What you doing at Popeye's? You got tired of waiting? Oh, it's still chicken, right? <laughs> I done messed your Popeye's up today. He, he, he gives us instructions. So, so he, we, we put an expectation on God, and when he doesn't exceed our expectation, or he doesn't fulfill our expectation, I don't even know if he's real. I, I, man, I don't even, I don't, why, I don't think that church thing works. Uh, uh, I, need a, I, I just need to go somewhere else because something, something got to be wrong over there. It can't be wrong over here. And, uh, uh, God, are you really real? And why am I doing all of this? But your life is not supposed to be yours anymore. So, so, so we got to get out of this spurred mentality, spoiled mentality. Amen. <laughs> And, 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 and be obedient children of the Most High King. Because I know what it's like to lose expectation. Right. In the faith. I had expectation. Right. Come on now. I had expectation. I remember getting out that program, so on fire for the Lord, and received the word from the Lord. In John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you can ask any request and it shall be granted. And I was standing on that word, and I thought what I got was confirmation. You could pull a confirmation straight out. The, some people pull a confirmation. I, I said one thing. I said, what you got out the word? And they said something totally different. I'm like, that's what you got? <laughs> When did I say that? I didn't. No, no, I, that God spoke through you because they were looking for a confirmation to do what they wanted to do. Okay? I had an expectation, I had confirmation. I just knew we was going to go to that ultrasound and, and Alex was going to be healed from that disease. I knew it, I spoke it. I prayed about it. I grabbed Ashley, I grabbed him. We prayed that morning. I seen, a, I seen a billboard that said something like, God, God does something like, I was like, yeah, he's going to do it today. He's going to do it today. And God told me and trusted me with the testimonies you share with the masses. And I'm going to, uh, the whole world's going to know that Jesus is a miracle worker. See, it's not about me. If this is what God wants to use so he can get his good news out there through me, then I know he's going to do it. I know my son's going to be healed. He's spoken. I'm abiding. I'm living his word. And I went in there with a joy. And I just knew that he was going to be healed. I knew it. I wish I could stress that enough to y'all. I just knew he was going to be healed that day. I, I prayed. We, we cried. And we, we was walking in faith. And we go to the doctor's office. And, and the nurse is doing an ultrasound. And I'm so excited. And I'm like, does he still have the cyst? And she looks at me like I'm crazy. But, but like, you could see a look of concern. Like, like almost like she felt sorry for me, right? Like, oh, sir, I, I'm sorry, but... There's no cure for this disease. It doesn't just go away. I said, but does he, does he? She's like, yeah, see this? And it lit up. It was all over his kidney. Jesus. Oh. And I'm telling her, I was like, well, you know, we got a whole church praying, and we're praying, and we're believers, and he's going to be healed. Maybe if it's not today, but he's going to be healed. I'm still talking faith, right? I'm still talking faith. He's going to be healed, and I'm letting her know that. But am I letting her know more than trying to convince myself? So, so, so then I get in the car, and I was so discouraged. I was so discouraged. I'm like, is he real? Like, I, I, I did this. I, I, am I not doing enough? What, what else can I do? But I was already doing everything I could. See, see, that's when the enemy tries to push you into works and make you think, I got to work and work and work because then I'm going to earn this miracle. They were walking the wrong way and Jesus pulled up on them. 
See, that goes against religion because religion is going to tell you if you're going the wrong way, Jesus is not going to pull up. If you're going the wrong way, then, 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 then he's not going to do anything for you. That's on you. You're going the wrong way, and you're going to die in your sin. And hell is a real place. You better turn or burn. But, but, but hear what I read. After the crucifixion, they were going seven miles away from where they were supposed to be. And Jesus chased them down, amen, and began to have a conversation with them. But watch this. When you lose expectation, you won't even recognize Jesus. My butt. I almost dropped the good mic. They was talking to Jesus and didn't even realize it was him. What am I saying? Maybe you've been walking the wrong way. Maybe you just took the wrong step the wrong way. But Jesus is still talking to you. Oh, I know he's talking to you. He called you to get up and come to Avondale on this dead end street on Resurrection Sunday. I don't care if it's a high, I don't care what day it is. You got up on this day, amen. And he told you to come into the house of the Lord, amen. Because he had a word for you. Man can't live off of Popeyes alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, amen? That's the word that's going to give us nourishment. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. He rose for you. And he's chasing you. They said, did not our hearts burn when we talked to this man? Is your heart not burning right now? Because he's speaking to you? The only thing you got to do is follow him. And that starts with one step. Stop trying to get, make it all the way over here or, or trying to skip the line. Just walk with him. Because he's walking with you. He's chasing you, but he said, look, harden not your heart, for today is the day of salvation. He's standing at the door, and he's knocking. When those skies crack, there's no more knocking. It's over. He's coming for his church. It's too late to repent. You needed to see. You was a wicked generation. You needed to see it to believe it. He said, look in the mirror. You didn't speak yourself into this earth. He spoke you here. It doesn't matter what your parents thought. It doesn't matter who they are. He spoke you here with a purpose. You're not, you're not a mistake. God makes no mistakes. We got a little bit more time. I know y'all going to burn crawfish and boil crawfish and eat. And, but I think we got a little bit more time. <laughs> I love y'all. John 20, 1 to 18. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out. He whoo, broke out running. And the other disciple and they were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. Peter, 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 all that talking, Peter runs slow, slow. And, and, look, because you know he's the first one to run his mouth all through the scripture. He didn't even make it there. I bet you he was saying, I'm going to get there first. <laughs> nah, Peter, sit down. So, so they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. I wonder if I got anybody here willing to race to Jesus. Wow, come on now. Come on. <laughs> I was going to say, call it all. To, nah, I'm just playing. And, Y'all don't know what goes on up here. That's how, that's how I know it's the Holy Spirit, amen? Because it just keeps coming. That Peter then went out and the other disciple and were going into the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. You know he was going in. And he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Remember last year, that, I preached that whole thing. That means he's coming back. When, when the king folds the handkerchief and leaves it at the table, that means he's not done. That means he's coming back. Amen? Praise God. And guess what? The servants, they can't wait to see the handkerchief crumpled and thrown because that means they could pick up, clean up, and go home. But it was folded, so that means the king's coming back. So what the servants got to do is stay at attention waiting for the king to come back in. But they're servants. What do servants do? 
What do servants do? Serve. serve. Well, someone like that, that was hurting you to get out your mouth, huh? Servants serve. So if it was folded, meaning the king's coming back, that means you got to stay at attention, ready and willing to serve. Amen. For the son of man did come to be served. He came to serve. Praise God. Okay, but we're not going there. I could have did a whole, I remember we had a table, we had people sitting right, serving, pouring water, but it was cool. Go watch it on the YouTube. And the handkerchief that he bent around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. He saw and believed. For as yet, they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord. Mary Magdalene. Thank God for these mighty women of God. Amen. You know she was the first one to really share the good news? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that would preach itself. Right. Right. Oh, a woman was the first one to share the good news? Come on. I thought women... Okay, I'm, we're going we're gonna to go there. That's going to be a whole series. But, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept... She stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in, the, in white sitting, one at the head. Just keep in mind, this really happened. Okay, this is not a novel. This really happened. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in while sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. And did not know that it was Jesus. Oh. And she didn't know. She didn't know because of her expectation. She didn't reckon she was weeping. Because she had an expectation. It was easier for her to believe that he died and they stole his body than for her to believe that he rose. Like he said he would. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposed, right, keep in mind, he said woman, right? right? Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And keep in mind, he already knew. So when you feel the Holy Spirit ask you a question, God already has the answer. He's asking you that question because you got to be real with yourself. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him away. Now, she's accusing Jesus. If you had, boy, if she's from the West Bank, she's rolling her head. She No, she's rolling her head right here. Where, you to, where have you carried him? I'm not going to do it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where have you laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, exclamation point. It wasn't Mary. It, was, it wasn't Mary. It was Mary with authority, exclamation point. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbini, Rabbi, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene carried and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. He called her by name. When he called her by name, she stood to attention because she knew it was him. When he said woman, she didn't know. When he said her name, she knew it was him. Can I tell you, you at church today because he's called you by name. There was a point in your life when he called you by name and you stood to attention and you said, I acknowledge Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe he's real. But then expectation. Then the wrong expectation that was never God's plan took you away to where you don't even recognize his face no more. You don't even recognize his voice no more. 
Oh, but he's chasing you down. It doesn't matter if you're seven miles away from where he called you to be. He called you and he called you for a holy calling and he woke you up with a desire to have relationship with you. He rose. And when she heard her name called, she stood up. She stood to attention and he gave her a mandate. And she went out to share the good news. And guess what? A lot of them didn't even still didn't believe. Oh, I got to see it to believe it. Oh, and they saw it because he walked through the doors that they were locked behind. Today, he's walking through locked doors. You've been having a hard heart. You've been running away from the Lord. I don't know what happened to you. I'm not trying to make light of what happened to you. But I know what's happening right now is God is calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's reminding you. He has a purpose for your life. That's why you didn't die in surgery. He has a purpose for your life. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light because he has a purpose for your life oh but I'm supposed to be married by now I'm supposed to have this by now my sons were supposed to be healed by now how the other son got a disease oh my ministry is supposed to be over here by now no it's right where he wants you to be and you're right where God wants you to be amen and all you got to do is harden not your heart and say yes I believe now what shall you have me do it got to be a day for you to stop running The only place I'm going to ask you to run is to this altar and make a recommitment right here today on Resurrection Sunday 2024. A recommitment that you know what? I'm going to praise and worship my king. I'm going to believe that he is Lord and I'm going to respond to his voice and I'm going to go where he calls me to go and do what he called me to do and be who he called me to be. Come on. You ain't got to race up here. Because you're they already made it first. But please put some feet with your faith. Please humble yourself before the Lord. And he will exalt you. This is this is a this is a point of contact. This is this is a point of your agreement. This is what you're saying, you know what? I'm responding to that word in the natural with an expectation of the supernatural. Amen. Today is the day of salvation, declares the Lord. He called you today. He called you today. Answer today. Respond today. Respond today. Respond today. This is not any other resurrection Sunday. And this ain't no Easter Sunday. This is a day... He conquered the grave. He died so we can have life and we can have opportunities like this where we say yes to God. And I'm telling you, it will be the best yes you ever say in your life. He will take you to places you couldn't even fathom with your natural mind. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what he has in store for those that love him. Do you love God? Do you love God? Anybody else back there, respond to this call. Go ahead, tap your neighbor. Say, I'm going to walk up there with you. Soldiers don't go to war by themselves. They go with an army. This is your army up here. We are the army of the Lord. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Make a recommitment. Make a rededication right now today on this Resurrection Sunday. Praise God. Glory to God. Come on, people still moving. I got time. I got time, cuz. Today I got time. Come on. Okay, I'm waving. Come on. I'm, you know what? I might walk down and start pulling some people up here. I don't ever do this, so don't judge me. No, no, no. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. Harder not your heart. Some of you, put, uh, some of you battling right now. I don't think it takes all of that. And some other people battling. I don't, I'm not ready. I know I'm going to do this. I got plans to go do this, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it in time. 
But I'm telling you, today is the day of salvation. Don't even worry about how you look in front of anybody because if anybody's looking to see who's up here, they're looking at the wrong thing, amen? This is between you and God, amen? And he's calling you today, hard and not your heart, for today is the day of salvation. This is a recommitment. This is a rededication so you could walk out of these doors on fire and be about your father's business. In the book of Acts, when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, the first thing they did was come out the building. Ooh, and they set the world on fire. The West Bank in trouble. New Orleans in trouble. Because God's called you here right now geographically, strategically, generationally for such a time as this. Amen? Anybody else? Come on. Come now. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. The same devil telling you don't go up there. He's going to be the same one before you go to sleep telling you why you ain't go up there. Things might have changed. I'm here to tell you, if you do it with a sincere heart, everything changes right now. That's the God I serve. Amen? This is so beautiful. Y'all repeat after me with authority and conviction. Mouth can say anything. Let this come from your heart out your mouth. Amen? Because he said, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, then you too will be saved. Amen? Regardless of how it looks, regardless of how it looks with my children, I know my children believe that the Lord is real. And they could just walking out their own testimonies, amen? But my faith is in the word of God that they're all going to come, amen? Okay, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus we, believe we believe that you died, died. Crucified, crucified, and you rose again, rose again. on the third day. Through the power, through the power of the Holy Spirit, coward devil, come on, he's a coward, coward devil, get under my feet, you have no authority, I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ, today I repent of all my sins, my life is no longer my own is yours lord have your way in jesus name we pray and let the church scream amen glory to god what's his name what's his name jesus. praise god look i want to thank y'all for praying for my sister because we just seeing a miracle happening all over her amen but I, I, I'm going to say this prayer, and it's for healing because God is no respecter of man or person. She, she had the surgery, they said, four to six hours or as long as it takes. I told my family in the group, I said, it's going to be four hours in Jesus' name. And guess what? Four hours later, she was out of surgery. Amen? Because my God is real. Amen? Praise God. That's a whole nother story, but four is the number of doors. The lie, I believe somebody said that this was the year of open doors. So I'm praying an open door of healing over you and over your families. Amen. So Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the petitions of the saints that you respond to. Father, we lift, I lift my sister up to you right now as she's recovering. I pray for a supernatural recovery. Father, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my breath, those that are standing in the gap for, for, for their family members, for their friends that may be sick. We pray right now that cancer be a non-existent thing, that it got to go right now by the blood of Jesus Christ we speak healing into the atmosphere we speak your virtue into the atmosphere your healing power father god but this is resurrection sunday lord and we know he rose through the power of the holy spirit and we got that same holy spirit inside of us and you said signs and wonders will follow those that believe so we stand in an expectation of the signs and the wonders and the miracles to follow us we're not following them because we're following you we pray that you will have your way father i thank you for everyone that rededicated their life that recommitted their life father god i thank you for this resurrection sunday i thank you for your word that does not return back void i speak a fresh fire over your people a fresh wind over your people that you will take them to places that they never dreamed on father god and they will give you the glory they will be sure to give you the glory i pray right now in the name of jesus christ as you're raising them up as i speak father god as they're being healed as they go that they're gonna go and be about your business because we are the head and not the tail and you 
you have told us to be above and not beneath so sin no longer has dominion over us for you conquered the grave and we thank you and praise your holy name in the mighty name in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and let the church scream Amen. Amen. Glory to God. What's his name? What's his name? Hold on, hold on, everybody. Don't go, don't go, don't go. I know y'all ready to eat. I know y'all ready to eat. Who got their communion? Who got their communion? Okay, go ahead. Look, y'all gonna be released after this. Go get your communion. We're gonna take it together as the body. you through it. My brother said, what do I do? I'm going to run you through it, my brother. Glory to God. Everybody got the bread? Look, look, I wanted to be sure to do it at the end because I don't take this lightly. I don't do it out of tradition. I don't do it because it's the first Sunday. We do this in remembrance of him because he died and he rose from the grave. He took upon the sins of the world. This is his body, the body of Christ that he laid down to give us life. Can we give an amen, hallelujah? Now let's take it in remembrance of him. Oh, this is the, this is the blood. Who's grateful for the blood? Come on, this ain't no grape juice and this ain't no wine. This is the blood of Jesus Christ. Who's grateful for the blood? I don't think everybody heard me. Who's grateful for the blood of Jesus Christ that took upon your sins? Amen. He bled for you. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Now let's take it and drink in remembrance of him. Man, turn that all the way up. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Y'all can take pictures over here by in Jesus' name. Make sure you hashtag God Gang. Want a chord now, nah, play.